Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson. And today in this video brought to you by Gency, I'm gonna be showing you how I redesigned this logo, Climate. Now, Climate is an app that helps you regulate your carbon footprint using AI and other technologies. It's not real and it is directly from the subreddit. And I'm a big believer that if there's a logo in there that I think we can improve or even just give a new take on, I'm gonna do that and I'll show you the process. If you do learn something in this video and you like it, please subscribe, it's completely free. Firstly, what are the problems with the current logo? The problems are the K. Every eco-friendly logo has those sort of leafs in them and I think they become too generic. You, you know things become generic when they're used all the time, kind of like those swooshes that you saw back in the day on those weird, you know, clip art logo things that we would see. The type from the L to the A has been rounded off to make it look like a leaf shape. Now, when it comes to AI and AR technology, we don't really see that. We see a bit more of a modern approach with it because that's just the way it is. In my opinion, I think it's this way because it just gives that level of future. It gives you the idea that we are going into the future. So you see OpenAI and all these other companies, they all have kind of similar logos, which are very minimal, very non-offensive. They're just there. So getting rid of those curves will make it a bit cleaner throughout the process and make it look even more professional. It's surprising actually how easy it is to make something look more professional by just not doing a lot to it. The K is a really interesting K. It kind of looks like a half a butterfly and a caterpillar and an upside down eye. Now that's not me doing, you know, I'm not throwing shade at this K because there is a visual identity within the K. However, I do think I'm going to work on this and use the same format as yourself, but look at it from a different perspective perspective, I'm going to take this ecological app, this app that helps mitigate your carbon footprint. And instead of using the eco side of it, I'm going to use the modern side to it. Before I sketch my logos or even you know, do anything to it, I like to mind map and mood board. My mapping normally comes first to me. My mapping really helps me come up with connections and these connections can lead to very clever logo designs. So for instance, just using the word climate at first, using these simple words that are very relative or relative to the product. Then we sort of move away from them. Like, why are they creating this app? Well, there's sort of a climate emergency at the moment. Obviously, there's tech involved, so I write tech. Then anything that springs to mind that might influence this design. So I wrote Apple, Samsung, minimal and barrier. So barrier comes from the idea of creating a barrier to stop the emissions from screwing up the planet. What I do then is I take in images into an app called Milanote. You can use any app you like I prefer Milanote is so easy just to drag images from the internet or even just type them in and you'll get them from pixels inside of Milanote. Pretty easy. The idea of a mood board is to give off a mood or a feeling or the word that I hate, vibe. I'm looking for patterns within these mood boards, but at first it's just a bit of fun. Like what do I want people to feel when they see this design or when they use the product? Remember the logo is just one part. It's the branding surrounding it. And I even put the open AI logo in there just to baseline the design. Now, in every industry, there's sort of like an appropriateness of the design of where people sort of first think. If you think of like OpenAI, you're probably thinking of like your chat GPT, like Dale, and all of them have quite similar logos to their main parent company, OpenAI, or the main company. So having a baseline in there is pretty good. And I choose some colors. I, I like a sort of green color, but making it more vibrant, like a neon green. That seems to work well. A lot of of these like ecological companies, they choose like a natural green. But why don't we choose something that really, I'm gonna say it, that really pops. Obviously I've scaled this mood boarding process down. Normally I'll spend a bit more time. I would walk away, have a coffee, come back and you know, the mood board would be sort of there and I would carry on with a fresh set of eyes. So with those connections in mind, it's time to start sketching. Sketching is fun and not pressurized at all. The first idea I had from sketching was this idea of the K being the main icon. I love dynamic logos where there is like an icon in the actual logo type, the word mark that works by itself and within the word mark too. So I thought, why don't we just create a cool K kind of like the original designer. So I went ahead and started messing around. Warning, these ideas are bad and that's okay because 
because that's how every logo starts. I had this idea of a crescent moon. I don't know why. I, I just had this idea of outer space, but it didn't make sense. This crescent just looked really cheap and generic in some way, even though I've not seen it like this before. I wanted to also see if I could improve further upon the leaf shape in the climber. I knew I didn't want the eye underneath it, but I got a breakthrough moment when I realized that you could write the K, the vertical stem, and then we could mirror kind of like the original logo, but much simpler, this sort of like oval shape to create the bars of the K. There was a point during this when I was sketching where I thought this could be very modular and the actual idea might not have to be all encompassing, but could have the sort of thought process of being modular is what I'm guessing. So I drew out these four squares, thinking that I could create sort of a, an abstract K. I realized very fast that it wasn't gonna work because you couldn't read it. And this was a logo type after all, and that is why I sort of specialize in. Until I started to put the four squares in this perfect outer square, and I sort of basically created a polygon out of it to create the K. I really liked this idea. It was kind of accidental, really. This signifies to me something sharp something you know dangerous something that can't be controlled essentially the carbon emissions i really like the uniqueness of it too it was simple clean yet unique enough for people to recognize it and remember it if they were seeing it on an advert and that's what i'm looking for can someone draw that logo however badly in a couple of seconds. And I believe from this they could. So I started drawing out the typeface. Now I knew I wanted the typeface for it to be a sans serif. I wanted it to be very clean, minimal. So the K was the main factor of this. And I also wanted to have another icon, a visual element. I wanted a place where someone could read and also visual elements within the design that could be repeated over a brand identity, which is super important. So I ended up drawing out and procreate this design here that I really liked and I brought it in to Illustrator and then into Glyphs. This is a font making app that I use to design my fonts in. You will be hearing about a cool font coming out soon. Just keep that in mind. This app allows me more control over type than in Illustrator. You can like hold the handles and things like that and move them around. It's pretty pretty intuitive really, makes it a turn easier. So I quickly created the type and the logo inside of there. I then copied Lima, just those L-I-M-A, back into Illustrator because I wanted to work on the K by itself in the Illustrator and match it up, which I did. That was just so I got the proper proportions right of the K and I found it a bit easier. It's more graphical than typography. I then spent some time fine tuning the logo type itself. Now this is where I sort of had a breakthrough after fine tuning the type, I wanted to have an icon. Now to have an icon work well across a brand identity, it's very important for it to work by itself, but also along with the type. But I already had sort of an icon in the K. I didn't want just the K though as the icon. Those little bits, those polys could be used. And to go full circle and to bring this idea of emissions, protecting the planet by reducing your carbon emissions, giving it sort of like this cool warning sign. I created a radial grid or a radial pattern of them which gave it a cool look, in my opinion. I wanted to see which one would work best though, so I started you know, changing them. I always copy and paste. You'll see my artboards are always really messy because it's kind of like working in a kitchen, working out a new recipe. You just got everything everywhere. Then you just take what's the best bit. It's the least destructive way of designing because you don't want to be backspacing trying to get to where you were for your last edit. You would rather just delete the one that you know doesn't work and just use the one that you did before. So I found the icon that I liked. Now I needed to position it and make it work well with the type and I used clear space to know where to do this before I talk about clear space though I just want to thank Gency for sponsoring this video turn your freelance design services into shoppable products with just a link step one set up create and customize a fixed price graphic design service by setting up its type price timings and deliverables toggle Gency briefing to automatically require clients to fill in a briefing questionnaire adapted to the selected project type step two share Get a link for each and share anywhere from your own portfolio website or social media profiles to posts, chats, or comments. Step three, sell. Receive orders, design, and get paid. It's pretty great. It's invite only, and I got the invite code to get you in. 
Not many people know about clear space in logo design and it's important to know I think, especially for these very minimal designs where they need to be placed correctly. Thankfully, it's kind of simple. Those grids that you see around logos, essentially you can do them in any way you want, but it stops other bits of design getting involved with the logo. It's basically like a force field that blocks anything else in that area getting near that design. And I use a form of clear space to create my icons and to place them correctly in this composition. All we do is I start using guides and shapes. I take the K from Climber and I move it and I sort of create a copy of it around the logo. Now, wherever that K or block that I've made stops, I'll create a guide. And what will happen is it will create a nice even distribution of space around the design that works well and it works well because it's like you're copying the design again that's the grid that we use subscribe to the channel if you want to learn more about clear space and little logo hacks like that at this point i'm quite i'm quite happy with the design i like the color that we've got as well we've chosen this sort of dark dark color it's not pure black it's quite dark and i rarely use pure black in final products of designs and this nice creamy white with the bright green from from here it's so important not to just give you the design like this and say yep yeah, that's it done always show context with your design it shows you how it works and why it works so first of all i tried it in 3d i did this very easily in illustrator you know, go up to window or effects go to 3d inflate mess around with it a little bit looks cool kind of looks weird it gives the client a new perspective so that's how the icon looks in 3d now with the logo type after i've sort of refined it and i've gone ahead made sure that the kerning is correct you see me flipping it and then going back into glyphs and blurring it to make sure it works. That is to make sure everything works nicely in different perspectives. I then go into Photoshop and start mocking up a splash screen and making these different mock-ups. Obviously, this is a completely fictional idea, but the difference between creating a logo and creating a brand identity is creating the things around it. And that's why we have this template that we use here called the brand guidelines template, which you can find down below. Brand guidelines help clients understand what their brand is about how they are different and how they stand out so now it becomes more about the feeling of the company this entity instead of how the logo looks the amazing thing about the brand guidelines template is that it uses components and it's inside figma so it allows us to create this very fast figma is free for a lot of people just so you know double click on the component section and replace it with your own like i'm doing here and it will magically appear in the presentation change the typeface to rock grotesque one of my favorite typefaces ever you can make it look like normal no classic all the way to modern by making it super wide and bold. Creating all these different mock-ups helps us see the, how it could be used in real life. Obviously, it's completely fictional, so it's not really going to be used unless someone wants to make it. So hopefully this gives you an insight into how I redesign logos. So there you have it. Hopefully I've elevated the design, made it slightly better, giving you my take, giving you my perspective on it. Now, if you want me to redesign your logos and visit our subreddit, if we don't feature it in like a Reddit critique video, chances are, at some point i may redesign it or hop onto the discord it's a bit dead at the moment but that's fine go onto the discord put in your work into the redesign section and you may be chosen for a redesign thank you so much for watching i hope you guys learned something if you have please press that big fat subscribe button down below it means the world to me and i'll catch you in the next video see you soon goodbye